So it would seem that DC has pulled the old switcheroo on us, promising fans of Young Justice this at Comic-Con, but now as they ramp up their promotion for uh, DC Universe, what they're calling their streaming service, it would seem that this is the actual roster for the third season of the show. What the hell? I mean, I thought Outsiders was just like, ooh, you know, they're not, you know, they're uh, persona non grata with law enforcement or something like that. I didn't think they were actually referring, I guess it should have occurred to all of us, uh, and I don't think it did to anyone, interestingly enough, that they were referring to the actual team called The Outsider from the pages of DC Comics. Perhaps it didn't occur to any of us because nobody ever reads that comic. It's not popular it keeps they keep bringing him back and then it keeps getting canceled now i know that dc was able to level up suicide squad significantly to the level of freaking justice league and they should actually get more credit for that but you know what did it harley quinn did it and that character actually and margot robbie should be the one to get credit for leveling up suicide squad and i don't see a character on this new team roster that's as potent as Harley Quinn, who, by the way, is getting her own animated series on the new streaming service, DC Universe. But you know what I think is happening here? This is fascinating. I think that Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, not DC, I think they've given the directive to DC that they got big plans for Nightwing because suddenly the guy's everywhere. Maybe this will lead to his comic becoming readable again. It's so bad. Um, but the movie, you know, chugging along, right? Over the weekend, we had a delicious Zac Efron confirmed for the role rumor, which unfortunately, director uh, Chris McKay shot down. Uh, but he just said it wasn't true that he, uh, Zac Efron was confirmed. So there's still hope. And I think Chris McKay hopefully should see how excited everyone got and show those tweets uh, and comments to Zac Efron and his agent and be like, you gotta do it. What else are you doing? Um, he's like, I'm making a Ted Bundy movie. And it's like, yeah, it's not Nightwing. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But anyway, that movie is still getting made no matter who plays Nightwing. Uh, then also, of course, Dick Grayson is going to star in the live action, uh, live action Titans show on the same streaming service. And now he's leading this team, which Batman founded, by the way. And speaking of Batman, this sudden push for Nightwing says to me that, yes, Ben Affleck is bailing. Or he's just so unreliable at this point, uh, you know, that they can't build an entire cinematic universe around him. But rather than recast Batman yet again, they've decided to push millennial Batman, which is how I imagine the suits at Warner Brothers see Nightwing. <laughs> it's hilarious. I love, I love suit think, right? Trying to understand how the suits uh, look at these characters, which clearly are new to them. Uh, so the thing is, is that Batman's cast, though, as anyone knows who's a true fan, his supporting cast is the most interesting when you see how they contrast with him. You know, whenever uh, Nightwing has actually uh, donned the Batman cowl, they always make a point that he gives himself away by smiling because he likes his job. He's also more of a, a showman. One of my favorite... Um, moment nightwing moments in the comics is when batman was watching him work and he said uh dick likes the spotlight because of course his, his background in the circus but then they had a beautiful visual shot of nightwing fighting someone in a in the light of a street a street lamp but it was really cool because it was a spotlight it was like an urban spotlight and of course batman always prefers the shadows and it was just it was really interesting but we'll see if this experiment works i mean Batman has like the only supporting cast which has been able to consistently hold up their own solo comics. So it could work, but you know, those all stem from their, their appearances in the Batman comic. So if there are no Batman movies to support these characters, I don't know if it'll work in movies, um, you know, without that spine, I guess you could say. But again, I guess we're gonna find out. Now, with all due respect to Bretton Thwaites, who plays Dick Grayson, AKA Nightwing, I think we're gonna see his evolution from Robin to Nightwing in the live action Titans show, which I think is actually pretty interesting. It's one of the things that I'm most interested to see in that show, hopefully. Uh, and, and obviously because he has been, and they're promoting the show with him, uh, Bretton Thwaites in the, in the Robin armor, but of course on Titans, he always was Nightwing. So I think that, that very likely is what we're going to see. But I think as good as he might be on that show, and after seeing him in the last Pirates movie, I think he could be pretty darn good. But he's not going to make Nightwing as popular as Margot Robbie has made Harley Quinn. Zac Efron could do that, though, which is why I'm pushing so hard for him. Uh, anyway, maybe these much cooler characters that were promised to us at Comic-Con will guest star on the new season of Young Justice. Uh, the the uh, storyline is apparently there's a metahuman smuggling operation that spans the galaxy. Uh, but that seems very similar to the last story arc they had on Young Justice, which also allowed them to introduce a lot of DC characters. You know, sometimes blinking 
you'll miss them. Uh, but sometimes for some sad DC fans, that's all you get with your favorite obscure characters. Now, also speaking of uh, popularity of characters, I guarantee you that Static Shock, Spoiler, and even Beast Boy, who's also on that uh, Titan show, obviously, they would get a lot more fan attention than anyone on this new roster. But that's dealing with upper management for you. Do you want a third season of Young Justice or not? Because this is the price you have to pay. Personally, I'm devastated that there's no Miss Bar Martian. It's another reason for me to dislike Supergirl, because obviously they're using the character right now. But there's two Black Lightning characters here, so what the hell? Although, to be fair, the Pierce family has a history with the Outsiders team. Uh, and most of these characters, in fact, have served on the Outsiders at some point in the comics. So, in the background, there's Jefferson Pierce there in the middle with a much better suit than he's currently sporting on the TV show. Uh, at first, I had hoped that it was Aqualad. I was like, Aqualad? And I was like, clearly it's not Aqualad. I think maybe they didn't use Aqualad because in the upcoming uh, Aquaman movie, uh, they have a, a younger character uh, played by that actor um, from uh, Power Rangers. Uh, now, obviously, it's not the same character from Young Justice, you know, Black Manta's son, uh, but maybe they're like, that's who we want to push going forward. Oh, the problems of, you know, using multiple mediums. It's, it, it, it gets tricky, but I would hate to see a, a fan favorite character like Aqualad go the way of Miss Martian, apparently. It's so annoying. But then there's Superboy next to him. Uh, where's your ex, Superboy? Uh, and then also uh, uh, Artemis is apparently still going to be Tigress, which seems like a weird choice to me, considering how much everybody loves archers. They're like, yeah, let's just keep her with a sword and a crossbow. And they're like, what? All right, so. Uh, who's on the actual team? You know, obviously those are the mentors in the background because they don't rate full color. All right, so below Jefferson Pierce is his daughter, Lightning. Where's Thunder, his, her sister, uh, who's, who has served on this team, whereas Lightning has never been an outsider. But I think that uh, Lightning is obviously more visually interesting and lights up and Thunder doesn't, so uh, she gets uh, the spot. Also, on the, the new show on the CW, Lightning is played by China Ann McLean, who I think is a very charismatic actress. Um, maybe that's one of the reasons they decided to use the character here, uh, but that also sets a very ho a high bar repersonality for this, this animated version to meet. And then you can see Katana, of course, from Suicide Squad. Stop trying to make Katana happen, DC. It's not going to happen. She's not a good character. You should totally, obviously, be pushing Lady Shiva, martial arts grandmaster and master assassin. Such a cool character. Or Cassandra Cain, Batgirl. I don't know why they're like, oh, everyone, nobody's ever liked Katana. Her comic hardly lasted. It's ridiculous. Uh, then there's Metamorpho, screaming, comic relief, but in a nails on a chalkboard kind of way. I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, and then that frat, uh, frat guy looking dude in the front, I think is likely Geoforce. Uh, now he is a founding member of the Outsiders, so that makes sense that they would include him here, because you'd be like, why would, of all the DC characters, why would you pick that guy? But he's actually more interesting than he looks. All right, so uh, he is half-brother of Terra, right? Terra, maybe Terra will show up. That's very exciting. But he's also, of course, from the country of Markovia, which could give him a cool Eastern European accent and attitude like Quicksilver, right? Uh, and he's also the prince of Markovia, so that could be fun to explore as well. Now, as for his power set, he does gravity manipulation, which means he can make things he extremely heavy or very light, including himself, so he can fly. Uh, and also, sometimes he can shoot lava blasts, but and also sometimes mimic his sister's powers, but that seems maybe a little too complicated to me. Uh, we'll see, but he could potentially be a very cool character. Then last, and certainly most confusing, is that four, a forearm little dude in the middle there, who after some research, I believe, is Rip Roar. Who? Well, Rip Roar had a very brief uh, appearance in the pages of Young Justice, get it? That was also a comic, so it makes sense they would bring him over here. Uh, and he is uh, from Apocalypse in the comics, but he doesn't, this, this version looks a little bit like a parademon, which think about it, I think we could all really get behind. Imagine a parademon who was freed from Apocalypse to be his own, you know, they're like these mindless minions basically, but what if one of them was able to break free and be his own, his own little bug, right? And then we could learn about Apocalypse from his insider perspective. He could see what it's like to not be in such part of such a horrible society. I think it could be actually really interesting. And we all know that DC is also trying to make um, the new gods and, uh, 
uh, you know, a new Genesis and apocalypse happen, right? Just like Katana. So they have the new Gods movie coming up. They keep, uh, you know, hinting at it in the movies for some reason, even though nobody, everybody's like, I'm not that interested. And they're like, oh, but how about now? And the audience is like, I'm still not that interested. And they're like, well, how, well, what if we show you this? And the audience is like, yeah, no, don't care. But DC is like, we're gonna do it. Although Thanos eventually worked out so well, maybe this could work out, we'll see. But I actually kind of like having this little bug join the team um, and tell us all about Apocalypse, right? He's like, like all the funny jokes of like, on Apocalypse, we love to eat trash. You know how it goes. You've seen those kind of characters. I think it could be fun. So anyway, after your massive disappointment subsides that this new season is going to be so different than the first two, what do you think, right? I mean, we have, you know, DC fans have to adapt and evolve because we keep getting ridiculous curveballs thrown at us. And I think actually when you come to think of it, we are a remarkable uh, optimistic group because we keep hoping that things will, will change. And I, I think there are some things to be optimistic about here. So share your thoughts down below. Thank you for going over this with me. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.